Hello friends, I am Sham Tamankar. Welcome you all to the audio visual learning program MSPT Lead Learning at Your Doorsteps. Now we are going to deal with Course Outcome 2, Unit Outcome 4, Part A of your Subject Management Code 22509. In this unit outcome 4 part A, we are going to understand the concept of organization and important organizational structures. Now as the picture says, organizations are essentially made up of people with a common goal. So this is a definition of organization that when two or more people come together to achieve certain desired goals, then it is that entity is defined as organization. So mind well, the organizations are made up of people. They are not made up of animals or that of machines. Animals form herd, but they do not form the organization. That means they come together for their survival but not to achieve certain common goals. Now what is the content of this part? Concept of organization. Then organization as a structure and process. Line organization. So we will understand what is line organization. We will understand functional organization. And we will go through the references. So there is a thought to ponder. So what is that quote? The quote says that the organization achievements are the results of the combined effort of each individual. So when organization achieve their goals or want to achieve their goals, then everybody from the organization has to contribute. He has to do efforts then and only then organization as a whole can achieve the goals. Now we have already defined what is organization. That when two or more than two people come together or associate themselves to achieve their desired common goals, it is called as an organization. Now there may be social, religious, political, business and other various types of organizations and institutions existing in our society like factories, shops, government offices, banks, schools and colleges etc. Now they may be small or large. They may be business or non-business, may be simple or complex or local or global and so on. So we can classify the organization on such basis also. So as far as simple and complex is concerned, when the organization is small, it is a simple organization. Consider a vendor of Mahindra and Mahindra. He has a small factory, there may be say 15 to 20 workers working there. So it is a simple organization. But Mahindra and Mahindra itself is a very complex organization. It is very big and very complex. Similarly, the said vendor, it is a local organization. And for Mahindra, it is a global organization. right? To conduct any activity, business or non-business, there is a need of an organization. So if you want to conduct any activity, you have to form an organization. Without it, no activity is possible. Now as already said, organizations are essentially formed of humans. Machines can be organized as physical resource by us but there cannot be an organization of machines. 
Now there are two connotations or meaning of the term organization. One as a structure and the other as a process. We will look into it. So organization as a structure. According to the words of F. Cast and S. Rosenberg, structure is the established pattern of relationship among the components or parts of an organization. So there are components and parts of an organization and you try to establish a relationship. It has got a particular pattern. By doing so, you are creating a structure. Now here the component or part may refer to the different functions and departments but in essence it refers to the people working in it. So when you say organizational structure you essentially talk about the people who are there and how they are structured or they are arranged and positioned in a structured manner. It is the creation of position with defined duties and responsibility for which an appropriate authority is to be fixed. So when you create the positions, you have to define the duties and responsibility of the position. That position is created to carry on certain activities and so those activities become the duties and responsibility and for which you have to give an appropriate authority. So unless authority is given to that person to work on those activity, he will not be able to do that. It is essential for attainment of the objectives of an organization in an effective and efficient manner. So if you want to carry on the activities of organization in effective and efficient way, and if you want to attain the objectives, then you have to create such structure, you have to create the positions, give responsibilities and give the authority. Now there are various types of organizational structures such as line, line and staff, functional project etc. But we will look into two very common structures only. Now organization may be flat or tall according to the span of control. The span of control means the number of people working under one position. So if less number of people are working under a particular position or a particular manager you can say then you have to create more number of levels of the organization and such organization is called as tall organization. But where more number of people work under one position or one manager then such organization becomes flat organization because there are less number of levels of organization or the management of the organization. They may be centralized or decentralized according to the geographical placement. So the organization may be placed at different places. So it is called as a decentralized organization. Some organization are at one place only. So their operations are centralized. But more essentially, it refers to the centralization or decentralization of power. That means if the power is concentrated in very few people at the top, it is called as a centralized organization. But when the power is distributed below at the lower levels or the authority is decentralized at lower levels, then it is called as the decentralized organization. Now organization as a process. Lewis Allen defines organization as process of identifying and grouping of work to be performed, defining and delegating responsibility and authority, and establishing a pattern of relationship for the purpose of enabling people to work most effectively together in a accomplishing objectives. So you may be confused here that what is the difference between structure and process. So when I say process that means doing that thing. That means when we appoint a 
person at a position we delegate the responsibility and authority so the process of delegating responsibility and authority is expected here the above definition covers a far wide meaning and there may be endless and elaborate activities to be done while going through that process so there are only three sentences but the meaning it covers is very very large and there are endless and elaborate activities to be done for carrying out this process it must be kept in mind that the process of organizing not only relates to human resource but also includes arrangement of physical resources that is land and building plant and machinery raw materials utilities energy sources and so on now we'll see what is line organization so here in diagram you can see line organization there is general manager at the top and there are different functions marketing production and finance manager we'll focus on the production department or production manager so there is a foreman working under him under the production manager and there are workers under foreman so as far as the management level is concerned there is a one to one uh, you know authority delegation so authority flows from the top and responsibility flows from down to up so this is the simplest and oldest form of organization it is also referred or called as military or scalar organization it adheres to the unity of command as i said that there is a unity of command there is one man one boss system and as there is one man one boss it is called as military organization also it is suitable for small and medium size organization where the subordinates are not in large numbers so where the organization is small you can have such type of organization the work is of routine nature so there is no complexity of the work and the business is stable advantages of line organization are that it is simple there is quick decision making proper discipline is maintained as authorities are defined clearly and there is better communication now what is functional organization you can see the picture there is general manager at the top then there are four five departments like marketing production personnel finance r and d maybe more number of departments will be there as per the requirement then there are again another level working under it which is a horizontal level okay so it is similar to line organization except there are some further horizontal level as i said under functional level as against line organization where one to one relationship is envisaged this is the most widely used form of organization structure because of its simple logic here the tasks are grouped together on the basis of functions all production activities or all financial activities are grouped into a single function the functional structure suits best where the goals of the organization emphasize functional specialization efficiency and quality advantages of functional organization are that it facilitates specialization better coordination help economies of production effective supervision and scope for functional improvement so this is all for the concept of organization and the different types of organization we looked into so thank you friends thank you very much now we'll go to unit outcome 4 part b shortly thank you